ladies and gentlemen. I am a record dealer. And my store is in California. I would like to welcome you to fabulous Hollywood, entertainment capital of the world. Let's go for a quick spin around town. Now, here's the famous Chinese theater. This is where all the stars stick their feet in the wet cement there. Now we're on Vine Street looking toward Hollywood Boulevard. There's the West Coast headquarters for ABC. And on the corner of Sunset and Vine is NBC. On the other corner is CAP for Capitol Records. That's the executive offices. Ah, Hollywood, the land of luxury where everybody drives a Cadillac. Where there are so many reasons for living. <laughs> yeah, they can't get anybody to die. Yet this is Melrose Boulevard and the huge studios of RKO. Now, right next door, we have Capitol Records Recording Studio. This is where new talent is always welcome. Uh, well, uh, almost always welcome. Yeah, take your plumber too, bub. Hey, look, there's my record store. Hey, I'd like to tell you a little story what happened to me one day. I'm standing on a corner trying to hustle a few records. Business is bad. Hey, but how about a record? I got some wonderful... I... What is this? Hey, fellas, I got some wonderful records here, would you... Hey, lady, would you like to hear some beautiful music? I... Hmm. Hey, look, bud, things are bad. Would you like to buy... A... Oh, you gotta sell those things. Say, mister, how about a record? I got... Oh, a tough guy, huh? Say, girls, I got some fine re... Ay, 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 ay. Mmm. Hey, uh, come here. You look like a music lover. I got some very fine records. I got some comical records to make you laugh. <laughs> oh, real good. I know you get a big kick out of them. Would you like to come inside and hear them? Have you got any Yogi Yorgas on record? I got a lot of them inside. So have I. <laughs> Boy. Hmm. Say, young man, would you like to buy a Bugs Bunny album for your lady friend? E, I, cheapskate. Oh, this looks like a real cornball. This guy, I gotta sell a record to. Hi, handsome. Uh, would you like to listen to some very fine recordings? I got some real wonderful records. If you'll just step inside, I'll, I'll play them for you. Oh, they're real wonderful. You'll just love them. Oh, come on. Come on inside and hear them. You know, it's a pleasure to have you in my little store. You know, when I looked at you, I said to myself, there is a gentleman who enjoys the finer things in life. And believe me, one of the finest things in life is music. Well, uh, what kind of music would you like, sir? I guess you like all types of music, huh? Well, look, I got something here for you that's just out of this community. Here. Music for domestic disagreements. I ain't married. So you ain't married, huh? <laughs> Lucky fellow. <laughs> Oh, you're a gay blade. Yes, sir. but you're a lady killer. <laughs> gay old dog. <laughs> dog. Uh, look, I tell you what. What you need is some romantic music. Something by the Eep sisters. I got something that you can use in your bachelor apartment that's out of this community. Now, look. This is called Fugues for Forbidden Passions. You know what a fugue is, don't you? Well, look, I'll, uh... I got it behind the counter. I'm a little afraid to handle it because it's, uh, it's so hot, I won't even play it for myself. I might lose control. Wait, I'll get it for you here. Oh, this is something. Yes, sir, this is the best thing the Eep sisters ever did. Fugues for forbidden passions. Hey, the Eeps, boy. 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 I ain't married. He ain't married. He ain't married. This kid is murdered. Hey, look, I'll tell you what. I know exactly what you want. This is classical music. You know what classical music is? Did you ever hear of Barktakovich? I have Barktakovich's Sinatra for flugelhorns. It has eight flugelhorns, one alto baritone, and 27 C melody tubas. Oh, you love this. Oh, this is just great. Real classical. I'll get it for you. 
Believe me, boy, this is one of my best sellers. <coughs> Just take a look at that, boy. That Bakhtikovich is really something, believe me. Those deep groups... It don't bend. I have a friend that has a record that bends. It don't break at all. I like records that bend. Yeah, that bend. Well, defective merchandise. They ought to know better than to ship me something like that. Hey, I bet I know what you are. You're an LP man. You like unbreakable records. I used to know a song once, maybe you have it here. It goes like this. Well, well, uh, well, what, what, what's the name of it? Wait, wait, what, what's, what's the name of it? I don't know the name. Well, well, uh, who, who, who sings it? Who sings it? Well, I'm sure you do. Well, 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 uh, let's see now. It should be in here someplace. Uh, la pa ti pa tam pa ta dam pa ta pa tam pa ti de am. La pa ti pa tam pa ta pa la pa ti de tam. Ah, here we are. La pa ti de ta da ta da. I'll sell this sucker a record. I am pa ti de ti de ti da. I am pa ti. Here it is, boy. I didn't think. Uh, just I'll I'll play it for you here. Yeah, works better without the paper too. Oh, this is it. <laughs> You'll all join your hands and you circle the ring. You'll face her, embrace her. Now why don't you swing? Go all around that corner, girl. Now her name is Kate. See, saw around your honey boys and don't hesitate. Keep going out to the right for swing in a whirl. Here we go now, cross the ring, swing that opposite girl. Four little ladies circle around in the middle of that ring. Right back now to the same old boy. Give Charlie a swing. Everybody promenade. How much? 85 cents, uh, plus a few cents tax. 85 cents? Too much. Too much? Too much money. Wait a minute, do you realize the cost of recording one of these records? Too much money. No, wait a minute, do you know how many people work their, their heads to the bone to make a record like that? 85 cents? That's not too much. Too much Listen, money. Wait a minute, just a minute. I'm going to show you something so you can see it with your own two eyes. You'll see how these records are made and you'll see 85 cents too much money. Let me too help you. Money. I'll take your answer, you won't fall down. Come on, bud, I'll help you out. Steady now. Oh, he's a heavy one. Damn. Come on. the janitor till after five. If you'll go around to the back. Listen, sister. I'm a record dealer. He, he buys your records. I sell your records. We would like to see how records are made. Uh, would you mind calling somebody important out, please? Touch. We're going to be shown to join. Uh, what can I do for you? Well, uh, I'm a record dealer, see? Yeah. And this here's to a uh, gentleman. Uh, he buys your records, see? Yeah. We would like to see how these records are made. Well, pretty late. Uh, you know, the records aren't made here. They're just recorded. I tell you what, I can take you around and show you the studio, maybe drop in on a few sessions. Oh, that would be grand. All right, come along. Whoa! 
Now, before we go in here, I want to tell you what this is. This is our repertoire department listening to the new songs. Once a week, the publishers and songwriters bring their songs in and play them for the men who listen to see if there's anything they're interested in recording. Now, if you'll be quiet, I'll open the door and we can sort of peek in. Play the library's right. Run that scale right up and down. Take a break and then go to town. Demonstration too, Dave. Uh, which <laughs> artist would you have in mind on our label? Well, I thought it would be great for Joe Finger's car. Well, Lee handles Joe Finger's. Well, he sent a lot of rags, and Dave, uh, he's got a hit going now. I mean, what's the release date on it? All right, follow me. Then the ocean blue. If you would just agree that you love nobody but me, my heart has plenty of room for you. My heart has plenty of room for two. Each time it beats, it beats for you. You seem to hypnotize me with your pretty eyes. My heart has plenty of room for you. Okay, fellas, that's a good take. We'll use that. Take five, please. Hey, what's all this junk here for? Well, uh, this, this here, uh, on this here board here, you see all these dials? Well, well, you see that red dial? Now, that's the most important thing in the whole board. That, that red dial is very important uh, because it, uh, well, uh, hey, hey, look, I know all about this here board, but he doesn't quite understand it. Will you mind explaining to him what it is? What happens with these buttons here? Certainly, I'll be glad to. These are the volume controls for the microphone so that the engineer, who is called a mixer, can adjust the balance of sound on each instrument in the orchestra. Yeah, but what's the red button for? The red button? I don't know. We never use it. These controls are the equalizers which control the tone of each of the microphones in the circuit. Now, fellas, if you look over here, this is the tape machine on which the recording is done. This is a plastic tape, and on this tape is a coating of iron oxide, and the iron oxide is capable of being magnetized. Now, when the electrical impulses from the sound come in here, they form a magnetic pattern, which is then run back through a recording or a playback head, and the sound is again reproduced. Now, this tape, uh, very fortunately, can be cut and edited just like motion picture film. If you make a mistake or if you have a bad note, you can take a pair of scissors and cut it right out. Now watch, I'll show you how this tape runs. You said that you love me, you kiss me. This is the control room where the lacquer master is made from the magnetic tape. This is the tape that was used to record the original session. Now it is being electronically transcribed to a lacquer record, which we call a lacquer master. It can be played just like any of your records at home. But we will use it to produce metal duplicates so that we can press thousands of any one record. Those scully lathes reproduce exactly on record sound patterns that were magnetically recorded on tape. Well, now that you've seen this, uh, maybe you'd like to see a studio. I can take you upstairs and show you our big studio. Maybe there's a session going on. But before we go, you better let me go up first and make sure it's all clear. You wait here. I'll be right back. Hey, who needs him? Well, let's go, let's go around and look and see what's cooking, huh? Come on. What are you doing in here? Hey, wait, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. You can't throw this on uh, my friend out like that. Why not? I'm a record dealer. Oh, a dealer. Oh, a dealer. Yeah. Ha! Come on. Hey, there's less ball. 
Paul and Mary Ford. Well, hey, how are you? How you been? What do you know? Boy, you sure been eating well. You look good. Who were they? Dean Martin and Jerry Lewis. Come on. Where you been? Well, uh, he, uh... Oh, oh, all right. Come on, follow me. Look. Come out of and live with me, little Liza Jane. I am drinking carefully, little Liza Jane. Oh, Liza, little Liza Jane. Oh, Liza, little Liza Jane. Oh, little Liza Jane. Now, fellas, what you've just seen is just the recording end of the business. There's a lot more that has to be done before you get to a finished record. Look over here. Now, this is a lacquer master that we just did here at the studio. After that, everything is done at the plant. For example, here's a metal master from which the lacquer master is made. This is done by a process of electroplating. From the metal master by electroplating, we make the metal mother. And from the metal mother, we make the metal stamper. And this is the actual metal part which presses the record. Now, obviously, before we press the record, we have to have a biscuit or some material out of which to press the record. And it's made up of these nine different substances. Carnauba wax, red slate, copal gum, keystone white, cotton floss, ethyl cellulose, carbon black, zinc stearate, vinsol. And all of these substances go into what we call the biscuit. This biscuit is placed in a pressing machine with the labels, and out of that we press in a process of heat and pressure this record. You'll notice the edge is still untrimmed. This record is then trimmed, which is the finished record. It's put on a sleeve, and it's ready to go. What you really should do, though, if you want to see how this is done, is go to the factory. Hey, that's a good idea. Sure. Let's go to the plant. I'll show you just exactly how this thing's done. Fine. Right. Yeah, thanks very much, son. It was very interesting. Say, uh, by the way, where is this factory? Scranton, Pennsylvania. Scranton, Pennsylvania. Screw, 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 scrap, scrap. Hey, uh, let's go back to the store, huh? Come on. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we finally left, and I thought for sure I had him sold. But you know what that guy wanted to do? He wanted to see where the records were pressed. Yeah. Like waffles, he said. I told him the big plant was in Scranton, Pennsylvania. My gosh, what do you have to do to sell a record that's beyond me? So off we went. about nine hours of flying, we finally came into Scranton, where the Capitol Record Plant is located. Yeah, here is the Scranton Record Plant, one of the biggest in the world. Yeah, come on in, chum. Oop! Look, do me a favor. Call somebody important to come out here, huh? No. I understand you like to see how records are made. Uh, yeah, that's our point of some coming in. We came all the way from California to Scranton, Pennsylvania, just to see how the records are made. This is a record buyer, and he's very interested in it. Well, certainly, that's easily arranged. Just follow me, please, and I'll explain each All step. right, thanks. The work of the factory begins with the arrival of the lacquer masters from the recording studios. 
It is from black discs like this one that eventually hundreds of thousands of copies will be born if the record is a hit. The lacquer master is inspected very carefully to see if any damage has occurred in shipment and also before it is subjected to the several metallizing processes. After gentle dusting, the lacquer master is washed, gleaming clean. Then it is dipped into a chemical bath to sensitize the surface to accept a chemical deposit of pure silver. Again, it is washed to remove all of the excess chemical. The lacquer master is then sprayed with a thin coating of silver, which is actually less than one ten thousandth of an inch in thickness. This silver coating will serve as a base for the duplicating process. Just look at the shiny silvery coat now, and it's all ready for the electroplating process. The silvered lacquer master is now mounted in a special hanger which will hold it and keep the lacquer turning while a layer of copper is deposited on the silver face. And there it goes into the electroplating solution for the copper plating. The plating solution is constantly agitated and filtered so that an even deposit of copper is laid on the silvered lacquer. Now the copper face has been built up on the silver to a thickness of approximately 30 thousandths of an inch. Then the original lacquer master is removed from the plating tank and it is disassembled from the hanger. Now the original lacquer is stripped or separated from its metal counterpart, which is an exact duplicate in reverse. This newly formed silver-faced copper part is called the metal master. The lacquer master is filed and the metal master is carefully inspected to see that it is an exact inverse replica of the lacquer. And then it goes to be carefully cleaned with special chemicals and is treated with a separating solution. Notice how each step requires utmost control, both as to inspection and cleaning, to assure perfect plated parts. For without these measures, final reproductions or finished press records would suffer. And once again, the metal master is installed into a non-conductive hanger, this time for the addition of a coating of nickel on the silvered face for hardness and protection against corrosion. It is placed into the nickel plating tank and a thin deposit of pure nickel is applied. When the desired thickness has been deposited, the hanger is removed from the nickel plating tanks. The metal master is inspected and again is placed back under the hanger after receiving another chemical separator coating for a new face coating of nickel. Then it goes into the copper plating tank where it has a coating of copper applied to the nickel face until the total thickness of the nickel and copper is approximately 25 one thousandths of an inch thick. Several hours later, the metal master and the new copy which has been forced on its face is removed from the plating tanks. The metal master is taken from the hanger and the process of stripping or separating the nickel-faced copper part from the metal master is done. This new part, which is composed of a nickel face backed up by copper, is an exact reversal of the negative metal master. So is positive with grooves exactly like a finished record. This new metal part is called a mother. The metal mother is played just like a record. It is subjected to a careful audio test. Minor defects or imperfections in the mother may be corrected with the aid of jeweler's tools under high-powered microscopes. If the metal mother passes inspection and test, it is then used to electroform stampers. The process of making a stamper is exactly the same as the making of a metal master. 
The cleaning process, nickel plating, copper plating, and stripping or separation, plus a hard chrome final coating for wear. Now this is the machine that punches the center to prepare the stamper for mounting in the record press. The hole must be exactly in the center, and this machine does the job to the thousandth of an inch. Now the stamper is trimmed to size so it can be mounted in the press. The stamper is now installed in the press die or platen which is fastened to the record press. Before we show you the actual record press at work, let's take a look at the die or platen that holds the stamper. It's a lot more complicated than it appears. Look at those channels in the metal. Steam is forced through these channels to heat the stamper for pressing. Water under pressure cools these same channels, which hardens the record. Capital has the finest precision machine shop for making and maintaining these dies. Here is typical equipment that is used. Radial drills, turret lathes. Shapers, rotary surface grinder. Other services are needed in this vast plant. Here is one of the large compressors that supplies tremendous air pressures to the record presses. Here is a battery of hydraulic pumps which supplies high pressure for the record presses. And gauges, the watchdogs of machinery. Yes, all this and much more is necessary to bring you recorded music at its peak of perfection. Grooves exact to the millionth of an inch must be impressed from the stamper into the material from which the record is made. For many minute imperfections not visible to the highest power microscope can sometimes be heard as a defect in the final pressing. Materials from all over the world come in carload lots directly to the plant. Lifts swiftly transport the wide variety of materials to the warehouse and stack it for use. Here is vinylite resin, an important ingredient. This is fine talc, one of several fillers used in the compound. Here is Congo gum from Africa. And carbon black for color. Shellac from India. All these materials are mixed much more carefully than the average housewife mixes her cake. For here, fractions of an ounce of an ingredient determine the quality of the finished record. There goes a batch of raw materials into the hopper for thorough mixing. It is carried up these pipes to the Banbury machine. And here is the mighty Banbury, named after its inventor. Capital has the largest in the industry. Here's where the biscuits are made from which records are pressed. A quarter million dollar machine just to mix biscuits. Automatic knives score the sheeted compound into squares from which it is conveyed through cooling tunnels where it hardens. Next, the compound is separated into squares, each square just right for one record. These are finished biscuits. Every batch of compound is subjected to laboratory tests which go on constantly. This one is the wear test to see how long the finished record will last under repeated playing. Individual samples being broken off for test purposes and this micrometer test for thickness. This hot water test is to determine the degree of warpage. A tensile strength test. And here is another strength test to see how far the record will bend without breaking. Resistance to shock is determined by these drop tests. Copper plated parts are tested for their tensile strength. When the batch of biscuits has passed the laboratory tests, the biscuits are taken to the warehouse and are ready for use. Now here we are in the press room ready to press records at last. A preheated biscuit is placed in the press. 
During the 22 second pressing cycle, the rough edges are trimmed from the previous pressing. In nearby testing booth, one record from each spindle is played all the way through as part of the continuous inspection process, which assures the quality of the final product. Here is the automatic dinking machine that punches out the centers and trims outside diameter to finish dimensions. This automatic device times each cycle as the hot steam heats the platen, cold water cools it, and the record is ready. Spindles of records are now being moved to the edging machine, which smooths and polishes the edges. Then the records travel on for final inspection and insertion into protective sleeves. While the records are being made, albums are also produced with automatic machinery. Here, chipboard is scored and glued. Now, front covers are mounted. Record sleeves are attached. Here are record readers being fastened into albums. This is the machine that glues covers on the 45 RPM boxes. Now the records are inspected and inserted into the finished albums. Finished records move quickly to the stock rooms where they are ready for immediate shipment when orders are received. And here is the order service department where orders come in from all over the world. This department is geared for fast action. Most of the orders received are shipped the very same day. These girls are punching cards for the automatic tabulating machines, one for each selection on each order received. Next, the cards are automatically sorted by selection so that the total day's orders for each number may be ascertained. Now the sheet is being made up that classifies the order for each selection by individual branch and distributor. This is called the pick sheet because it is used in the warehouse to pick orders. Thus, in a short time after the morning mail has been opened, orders are being assembled and ready for delivery to the carrier. Shipments are made continuously. Capital uses every method of transportation to assure prompt delivery. So that's why my delivery was late. Well, gentlemen, now you've seen how records are made. Yeah, it's very interesting. Believe me, we certainly enjoyed it. But thank you very much. You're very welcome. If you'd like to take a short kiss, you can go right out through that door through the plant. Oh, that's keen. Thanks. Right, Come on. Together. We'll take a last look at this thing here. Really, a lot of work goes into making a record after you see all these things, huh? Pretty unbelievable when, uh, when you see the, the mudders and then the, the masters and the things that have to go together to make a record. Now, how about buying that record, huh? What do you say? Good. That's uh, 85 cents. Yeah. Yeah, there's 75. And 85. Oh, wait a minute. Uh, don't forget the tax. Yeah, <laughs> the tax. Yeah, we are. Thank you. Oh, uh, hold on. Just a second. Come here. Come here. Come here. I've got something I want you to see. Wonderful. This is a marvelous album. And, brother, you haven't heard anything till you hear this album. It is out of this world. Why, you... Hey, wait a minute, wait a minute! Hold on, hey, wait! Don't! Don't! What are you gonna do? Don't! Ah! <laughs> <laughs> 